What are some of the most common mistakes people make when trying to obtain chiseled abs? Some of the most common mistakes people make when trying to obtain chiseled abs are doing too many reps with too many ab exercises. Another common mistake is thinking that training the abs is the key to great looking abs. And probably one of the bigger mistakes is people eat to prevent fat loss. When you eat to prevent fat loss, you can't see the abs no matter how hard you train them. People often assume that performing hundreds of crunches will give them six-pack abs. Why is this false? Performing hundreds of crunches cannot deliver six-pack abs for a couple of reasons. First, if you're doing hundreds of anything, it's not hard enough to give you the right stimulus for your muscles to develop strength. The second reason this is false is that it's a common misconception that training any individual muscle will burn the fat that's on top of that muscle. If you have fat hiding the muscle, when you use that muscle, the fat on top of that muscle doesn't go directly into that muscle to be used. It's used indirectly as an energy source for the body. So if we do hundreds of reps of anything, it's an ineffective strategy. No one ever really wants to do hundreds of squats or hundreds of push-ups or hundreds of pull-ups. So the idea that we would need to train the abs differently with hundreds of reps simply just doesn't make sense. How does nutrition affect abdominal training? Nutrition has a powerful effect on abdominal training. You can either eat to promote fat gain or you can eat to promote fat loss. If you eat to promote fat loss, your abs will become more visible. So the harder you train them, they'll become more visible. You reduce the fat layer on top of the abs that hides them. If you eat to promote fat gain by eating too much sugar, too many processed foods, or too much junk food in general, then you're going to hide the abs that you might have worked so hard to earn. And no matter how hard you train them, if you don't eat to promote fat loss, you're going to hide the abs you worked so hard to get. How often should you perform abdominal exercises? Frequency abdominal training is one of those areas that's frequently debated. Theoretically, the abdominals have a higher ability to recover because they have a strong role in posture, so they're kind of something we use all day, every day. So even if we haven't targeted the abs directly, they tend to recover faster. This leads many people to the, in my opinion, mistaken conclusion that they can train the abs almost every day really, really hard. Yes, you can, but why would you want to? Because one thing we don't have enough of is time. So we don't have enough time, why would you want to do more of something if you don't really have to? Certainly you can, but if you train them with the appropriate intensity, a smaller number of exercises, you can get great results without the need to feel pressure to do exercise every single day. Why is it so important to have a strong core, and how does it contribute to a well-balanced physique? Well, that's an easy one. It's important to have a strong core because our abdominals are the engine of movement and our arms and legs are the steering wheel. So we create the energy for movement with the abs and that is channeled out through our our, our extremities in the body. I often think of the abs like the handle of a whip. So if we have our arms and legs as the tail of the whip, we almost have a whip with a handle and four tails. So the more stability and strength we have at the handle, the more power we can generate through the tail of the whip. Another reason that having a strong core is essential is that we all want to have great looking abs. We all want to have abs that are there when we want to see them. But we also need to have abs that are there when we need them. When life calls on us to move, we need to be ready to act. Why should you set goals for yourself? Well, that's easy. Goals are your defense mechanism against life throwing you off course. We might start a fitness program or any other thing that we find worthy with the best of intentions, but when a sick relative or a car breaking down or a bad day at work or bad weather or not finding parking at the gym gets in our way, we sometimes throw in the towel. So if we have a clearly defined goal, and most importantly, if it's one that we care about, if we've found an ability to connect the goal to something that we really value and we really care about, our clearly stated, clearly defined goals that mean something to us become our defense mechanism against anything life might throw at us that would send us off course. Why is it more important to perform better cardio training than more cardio training? It's better to perform better cardio training rather than more cardio training because when we all want to do what's better rather than more of what hasn't been getting us what we want already. Again, everyone says to me all the time and every trainer in the world has heard the same thing over and over and over. I don't have enough time to exercise. So the reality is time is limited for all of us even if we do love to exercise and if we do value it. So the choice comes down to, be, to being either busy and fit 
or busy and unfit. We're all going to be busy. We're all going to have time demands. So with time demands pressing on even those of us who exercise consistently, why not have a better quality workout instead of doing more and trying to get more time when we already don't have enough of that? So if we simply do higher quality, more beneficial, more challenging cardiovascular training, which is going to help us bring out the abdominals, then we'll get better results in less time and everybody wins.